Today what I'd like to do is to uh, demonstrate the entering of data. So here we have a picture of my son, but I'm going to do some writing here. Oops, sorry. Here we have a data set. For example, 50 Torontonians were asked if they liked Rob Ford. 30 said yes. 20 said no. And um, so that's typically the way you see things reported in... Um, in a newspaper or it may say 60% said yes and 40% said no. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say how, can, how does this get translated into data? Well, first of all, what we know is we said, the question was something like like forward and then we're going to have a list of people who are yeses and we're going to have a list of people who are knows. And that's the raw, this is the raw data. This is how it would look like. And the number of yeses we'd have is 30. Sorry, I'm going to add the dots down here. And the number of do uh, knows will be 20. And that corresponds to the 16, 40%. So we have to do something similar. And I've already set this up uh, as uh, in a style that would be similar to the way SPSS does it. So let's go over to the SPSS screen. We have variable view, we have data view. In variable, bu variable view, first thing we have to do is set up the uh, name for the data, of uh, the variable. So in this case, like forward, that'll be a nice and meaningful title. And so we need to think about what type of data this is. So on the left side here, we have yeses and nos, and that's clearly categorical, a categorical variable. But, as a type of variable, we still put numeric, because our other options are comma, comma, dot, scientific notation, date, dollar, custom currency, none of those. Uh, string is not something we'd use um, very often. The width doesn't really matter, but we know, so we'll just keep it at the 8, that, that won't make a difference. Decimals, in this case, we want deci there to be zero decimals. The label gives us a descriptor. And uh, so in the label, we enter a descriptor. And in this case, do you like Rob Ford? Oops. Let me just get that in there correctly. Rob Ford. That works. And this values uh, descriptor gives us the opportunity to code the responses. And so we may choose yet one for yes. Add that, and we use two for no, and we add that, and that's okay. We can choose any codes to represent the categories or the classifications. Um, this column is for missing values, so if we had somebody who chose not to respond, we may choose to enter a nine for them, and then so we, we would know that nine, any nine in the data is a missing value. And then we move across here, and columns measure unknown. Well, th we know it's going to be nominal data, so we can code that that way. So now we have the variable ready, and we go to data view down at the bottom left here. And now here's our variable like forward, and we can start entering it. So we had one for yes and two for no. So we just simply enter one. Oops. One enter, one enter, what well, enter? Well, oops, my um, keyboard is being too sensitive. One enter, one enter, one enter, one enter, one enter. One. Thirty ones, and then we enter twenty twos, and that gives us. And let's say that we had a missing value here, which we don't, but. We enter a 9, and that just stays as a 9. And it's not a code. And so now we have our data set with 30 people saying yes to, like Rob Ford, and 20 saying no. We double check it, either through um, frequencies, display frequency tables, 
Let's just double check whether we entered it correctly, and it looks like we have 30 people said yes. Do you like Rob Ford? 20 people said no. Normally, you wouldn't know what the values were going to be, but since it is in this case. Now, let's say we wanted to, we had a situation where we had a measurement variable. So I'll just create a new data set. File, new data. And on the left side here, we'll have, let me just erase this, and we'll just go to the next page. And uh, we will have uh, seven uh, or the heights of seven crickets. And so we'll have zero point five two seven meters. Zero point four one centimeters, zero point three three centimeters, zero point two five centimeters, zero point five one centimeters, and we got seven sorry, point four seven centimeters, and zero point three eight centimeters. So we'll have seven heights of seven seven crickets. So this is much more straightforward to lay out in SPSS because you don't have to worry about coding. The variable name will be something like cricket height. A type is a numeric and so many of you uh, will hopefully don't confuse numeric with measurement data. We have two decimal places in this case, so we'll keep that. And um, height of oops of crickets. There are no values because it's not categorical data, and everything else can stay. We'll just change the measure to scale. Scale is the SPSS name for measurement data and go to data view and now we just enter the 0 0.52 0 0.41 0 0.33 0 0.25 oops, 0 0.51 0 0.47 0 0.38 and so we've entered the seven data points and again we can double check by doing making sure heights of crickets we'll take out this and we'll maybe just compute the mean and a standard deviation and if we want to draw anything uh, dot plot might be nice we don't have that option here We'll just leave it as one. Okay, that's what we get. So the average, the mean is 0.41 with a standard deviation of 0 0.0988. And so that's how to trans transfer data that we collect, whether it's measurement or categorical, into SPSS. And don't forget to save your file in an appropriate, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. And give it a good name, Cricket Heights. Height data. And save. This has been a demonstration of how to enter categorical and measurement data in SPSS. Good luck to you.